uh, ha is about coffee cup calorimetry, though it doesn't say it, with a reaction. You can tell it's got a reaction involved because uh, it has a balanced reaction as part of the problem statement. Let me read over this. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> the dissolving of calcium chloride is used in chemical hot packs. If 22.8 grams of calcium chloride is dissolved in 92.7 milliliters of water at 22.3 degrees Celsius, what is the final temperature of the solution? Uh, the mass of the solution is the mass of the salt and the water together. And I say that, as we'll see, because it helps us figure out uh, part of the problem. So there is a reaction, there is a solution, and this time we can think of Really, the solution starts out as water. We add some calcium chloride to it, and it becomes a solution because the calcium chloride dissolves. So you start with water, you add the calcium chloride, you get a solution. The base re uh, equation for this is that Q reaction equals minus Q solution. And our Q reaction term has a new form. It says that Q reaction, the heat energy for the reaction, is equal to delta H reaction times moles reacted. And I'm going to add something here so that uh, we can think about this longer term. Uh, moles reacted uh, with a one coefficient. And you'll see that the one coefficient is true here for the calcium chloride that's dissolving. So uh, we'll talk more about that when we do some other problems. Um, but really what you'll usually see is you'll just see Q reaction equals delta H reaction times moles reacted because most of the time the thing that we care about, the thing that's reacting, will have a one coefficient. Anyway, so um, now this says delta H dissolving, and delta H, uh, instead of delta H reaction, all this means is that instead of just a random reaction, this is a dissolving. So we could also just say Q dissolving equals delta H dissolving times moles dissolved. Okay. Um, now let's go ahead and say, uh, oh, so and the Q solution term is exactly the same as the previous problem we just worked. It's uh, me, uh, since the solution will be uh, changing temperature, it will have the change in temperature term. Let me go ahead and write this out and we'll start plugging things in. So uh, now Q reaction equals delta H reaction times moles reacted. That's going to equal minus mass of solution times specific heat capacity of the solution times, and it's delta T, but we'll just put T final solution minus T initial solution. And again, I almost ran out of space there. I did. So, um, so the only thing that's ever different as far as coffee cup calorimetry equations is the term for the reaction. So far we've seen Q solution equals this, uh, some, what some people sometimes called MCAT because if you write it as Q equals M C delta T, it sort of looks like Q equals uh, MCAT with the delta symbol being an A. I don't know. Uh, but uh, Q equals MCAT for the solution. It equals the same term for the water, and it equals the same term for the material gold that we've worked with in a previous problem. Now it's time to plug everything in. Uh, I'm going to plug it in on the product side first. So my temperature change, oh, we don't know our temperature change. So it's going to be T final. Uh, and I'm just going to call it T final since it's our only final temperature. And our initial temperature is 22.3 degrees Celsius. Nice and room temperature. 
Um, as from the lecture outlines, when you have a solution, you may assume that the solution has the same specific heat capacity of water. So uh, up here, so I'm going to write unless otherwise told. You may assume that the specific heat capacity of the solution equals the specific heat capacity of water. And uh, hopefully this makes sense because the uh, solution is going to be 95 plus percent water. Water is the solvent. And so it, it will be a little different, but to a first approximation, uh, it will be the same or uh, similar enough that uh, we can treat it as water. So now uh, I'm going to put in 4.184. Joules per gram degree Celsius. That's for water. Uh, put that in parentheses as well because I have my mass of my solution. And here's where we call out the mass of the solution is the mass of the salt and the water together. I have 22.8 grams of calcium chloride. I have 92.7 milliliters of water. Well, from lab this past week or in general from the lecture outlines, we know that Water is one gram per milliliter. So this is going to be 92.7 grams. And again, this is based on the fact that water is one gram per milliliter. So my mass of my solution is going to be my 92.7 grams plus my 22.8. And that sort of fits there. Then I'll put in my minus sign, don't forget it. Now my moles reacted. I know I have 22.8 grams of calcium chloride that are reacting and I have to turn those into moles. To do that, of course, we need the molar mass, 22.8 uh, grams of calcium chloride. I turn to my periodic table, I get my molar mass Uh, 40.08 plus 2 times 35.45 and now figuring out my moles 22.8 divided by 110.98. 0 0.205 moles calcium chloride. Uh, that's my moles. 0 0.205. And now my delta H. My delta H is given. My delta H is given in as minus 81.6 kilojoules per mole. Kilojoules is not the set of units that our equation is currently in. I don't know about you, so if I have the choice of kilojoules or joules, I always work in joules. I am a, a joules person more than a kilojoules person, person. That's just how my mind works. However you do it, make sure your units are the same on both sides. If it's minus 81.6 kilojoules and a kilojoule is a thousand joules, I can put in minus 81,600. Joules per mole, and that's my last part of my equation here. minus 81,600 joules per mole. And like in so many chemistry problems, we have enough information to suss out or figure out all of the parts of the equation except one. Now we can solve for that one part.
Before I solve for it, are there any questions about what I've got down so far? If not, then I'll keep going. So I will point out that there's a minus on the left-hand side and a minus on the right-hand side, so those two terms will cancel, uh, which means that our T final should be positive, and uh, that's, well, actually, I don't know. Yeah, uh, actually it will be. But let's go ahead and solve for it now. I'll put the right-hand side together, or sorry, the left-hand side together first. That's gonna, well, that's gonna be, actually, I'm just gonna take my two minuses, turn them into pluses. Now everything's positive except the minus over here. I get 81,600 times 0.205 is 16,728. And again, I'm gonna drop my units while I work on this. I'm happy to answer any questions about units that you'd like. Let's see, there we go. Now here, I'm gonna add these up, multiply them times this, similar to what I did in the previous problem. So I've got 92.7 plus 22.8. It's 115 times 4.184. I get, let's say, 483. times t final minus 22.3. Uh, might as well clear the 483. So my left hand side, 16, 7, 28, divided by 483 is 34.6. That leaves t final minus 22.3. So let's see, oh yes, add this to both sides and I get, uh, let's see, 34.6 plus 22.3 and I get T final equals 56.9 degrees Celsius. And a couple things I will say about that. So um, first off, temperature increased that's good because this is an exothermic reaction. Exothermic reactions give off heat and increase the temperature of the uh, solution. So this is an exothermic reaction. So delta H is less than zero. So uh, reaction gives off heat. So, solution must increase in temperature. And temp, there we go. Um, and if you drop a minus sign somewhere in this problem, it will go down and you're, you have to know that as soon as you see a negative delta H of reaction that your temperature has to go up. Uh, that is one of the things I will definitely be looking for uh, when I look for your uh, answers to the problems. Uh, let me back up a little bit so you can see the whole thing at once, hopefully. There we go. I went into tilt mode there, there we go. Uh, any questions about this problem?